delighted to see you in church this morning. Congratulations, you made it to the end of the month. You are welcome and you shall be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me do one thing. Turn to your neighbor and say to your neighbor, neighbor, this service is my service. Yes, my family will be blessed by the reason of today's impartation in the name of Jesus Christ. If you believe it, let your hands be for Jesus. Put your hands for Jesus. Clap for Jesus. Praise the Lord. I am more than a conqueror. I want to specially welcome every one of us to today's service, which is our Covenant Family Day. And it also doubles as our end of month Thanksgiving and dedication service. And I pray that every blessing that God has packaged for you for today's blessing, you are returning with them in the name of Jesus Christ. No one here will return home empty-handed in the name of Jesus Christ. For the great things that God is doing in our midst, we cannot take God for granted. That's why as a church, every last Sunday we set it apart to appreciate God for his act in our midst. Why? Because to take God for granted is to be grounded in life. Anyone that takes God for granted will never see the hand of God. But for us, we want to secure the hand of God upon our lives. That's why every last Sunday we come to appreciate him. For those powerful testimonies this morning, let's put our hands together for Jesus and appreciate him. Let's give him some clap offerings and more. To God alone be all the glory. And for anyone trusting God for any of those testimonies, I see you returning home with us in the name of Jesus Christ. Straight into the word of God. Our prophetic focus for the month is wisdom from above and thrones. Can we pray together as a church? I pray that your own throne will be higher and higher in the name of Jesus Christ. And our teacher series is unveiling the reality of wisdom from above. That's the teaching series we have been looking at in all our Sunday services. And today we shall be looking at the concluding part, which is the part five. We have established that wisdom from above is superior to every other wisdom. Wisdom from above is superior, is above every other wisdom. Why? Because the wisdom from above is from God Almighty. There is no other wisdom that can match the wisdom of God. We can see that account in the book of James, I mean James chapter 3, reading from verse 15 to 17. The book of James 3, from verse 15 to 17. This wisdom descended not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion. That is, every other wisdom will lead into confusion. But the wisdom of God will lead you into breakthrough. There is no confusion there. It went for that. He said, and every evil work. That's talking about earthly wisdoms. But in verse 17 now, he said, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. That's the wisdom from above. You and I, we need wisdom. Why? Because it's a vital thing. It's a vital thing. A man of wisdom will always kill height on a daily basis. A man of wisdom will know what to do by time. A man of wisdom will never be stranded. And I pray that even as this month comes to an end, your own wisdom will know no end in the name of Jesus Christ. Wisdom from above, it enthrones. We dealt about it all throughout the month in our midweek service and our Sunday services, talking about Joseph. Joseph was enthroned. Why? Because of wisdom. Illegal immigrants, a man with criminal record, a man that was in prison, ending up becoming a prime minister without election, without voting. The wisdom from heaven enthroned him. I pray that you shall be enthroned in the name of Jesus Christ. Solomon as well. It was the wisdom of God that catapulted him to become one of the best king, the wealthiest king of his time. You can see all of that in the book of Acts chapter 7 verse 10. And also 1 Kings chapter 4, reading from verse 29 to 34, talking about Solomon there. And also Daniel as well. 
I decree by the word of God this morning that the wisdom of God that you have enjoyed this month will no end in the name of Jesus Christ. Look at it, what wisdom we do. Proverbs 3, from verse 16 to 18. Proverbs 3, 16 to 18. I'm just trying to summarize what we've learned all throughout the month. Wisdom will give you length of days. That is, wisdom will give you long life. I decree, lift up your hands this morning. No one here will die young in the name of Jesus Christ. By the reason of wisdom, it elongates life. It elongates life. It went further. It said, at his right hand, there are what? Riches. Anywhere you see wisdom, there is wealth there. There is wealth. There is riches there. Stretch out your hands to this altar. I decree that poverty will not know your hand in the name of Jesus Christ. Your hand will continue to command wealth in the name of Jesus Christ. With this your hand, you will command wealth like sand in the name of Jesus Christ. It went further. It says that an honor is with wisdom. A man of wisdom will be honored anywhere he's found. Anywhere he's going, he's honored. They respect him. They respect him. He said her ways are of pleasantness. And all her parts are what? Are peace. All are part of peace. Anywhere you see wisdom, there is peace there. That's why I decree by the word of God today that any home that has been under any form of tension, today will mark the end of that tension in the name of Jesus Christ. From today onwards, you continue to enjoy peace in your relationship, in your homes, in the name of Jesus Christ. Peace in your families, in the name of Jesus Christ. Peace in your families, in the name of Jesus Christ. Peace, Jesus Christ. peace all around you, in the name of Jesus Christ. And verse 18, it says, she is tree of life to them that live hold of her. And happy is everyone that what? That redeemed her. So even as the month comes to an end, please keep asking for wisdom. Don't cease from asking for wisdom. Because a man of wisdom is an unstoppable man. He's unstoppable. He's unstoppable. I pray that for you, you become unstoppable in the name of Jesus Christ. Quickly, let's look at it with, with the time we have. What is divine wisdom? What is divine wisdom? What is divine wisdom? Number one, wisdom is inspired insight from our study of the word and other spiritual resources. Wisdom is inspired insight from our study of the word of God and other spiritual resources resources daniel talking about himself in daniel chapter 9 verse 2 he said i daniel understood by books i daniel understood by books it means that if you want to be a man of understanding you must read books you must be a reader you must be a reader a reader they are always a leader when you are a reader you are committed to reading books you'll be at the front You'll never be at the back. Preparing for this message this morning, I was, my mind was just all over the place this month, especially how God broke protocols in our very, very eyes this month. Some years ago, who would say that a person of a different color would be a prime minister in this country? It's not by mouth, not by magic, it's by what? By understanding. He had understanding. A man of understanding cannot be pushed back. Protocols will be broken for a man of understanding. Because you know it, they will put you there because you have the answer, you have results. This person we are talking about is even wealthier than even every member of the royal family. He's wealthier than he has his own personality. He's a wealthy person. But because he has the results, they say, no, you do it. If you look at the history, he came second. And down the line again, protocol was broken. The person that took first could not handle it. But they say, no, no, you will do it. Come, come, come. We want you to do it. Lift up your hands to God. Because you are a redeemed child of God Almighty, I decree that you shall not be pushed back anymore in the name of Jesus Christ. Anywhere you go, anywhere you are found, you will be preferred above others in the name of Jesus Christ. He's an unbeliever. You and I, we are believers. We have the mind of Christ. 
where you need is wisdom. And anytime you're studying, ask for understanding. Because the level of your understanding will determine the level of your results. Matthew chapter 13, verse 23, the Bible says that the word of God is like a seed. That as we receive the word of God into our hearts, that it will bring forth fruit. It will bring 100, it will bring 60, it will bring 30. It is traceable to the level of your understanding. In your career, go for understanding. As a student, go for understanding. Lord, empower my understanding. Because that, will, that is what will set you apart. The level of your understanding will determine your outstanding. The level of your understanding will determine your outstanding. Any area, in any area, either maritally, in relationship, in your career as a business, the level of your understanding matters. It matters. But I pray that wisdom will make way for you. Anywhere you are found in the name of Jesus Christ. The wisdom of God will make way for you in the name of Jesus Christ. So anytime we are studying, let me take it uh, a, a bit I mean, uh, further now. That inspiration here means reasoning with God. Anytime you are studying the word of God, you are studying any spiritual resources, you are reasoning with God to find way out, to find solution concerning any issue of concern. I will share with us some scriptures here. For instance, the Bible says, train up your child. Train up a child in a way that he should go. Proverbs 22, verse 6. It is our responsibility as parents to look after our children. To train them up in the way of the Lord. Look at it. Let's read together. Want to go? Train up a child in a way he should go. And when he's old, he will know what? Depart from it. You don't push your responsibility to, to, to someone else. If you don't train them, someone else will train them for you. They will influence them both negatively. They will share with them negative principles. That's why it is wisdom for parents to train up their children in the way of the Lord. In this part of the world, we must balance things. Not going about shift, 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 and forgetting your children, becoming a stranger to your children. There must be a balancing so that the children will not but be influenced by a stranger. Train up a child in a way that he should go, so that when he is old, he will not depart from it. Create time for your children. Have quality time for them. Create time for them. And I see God giving you understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. We are looking at family now. I'll be looking at another area again in family. We've talked about uh, children now, train up our children. I pray that no any child will be a source of concern anymore in the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone that is a source of self concern, I decree by today's encounter, I see God touching the heart of that child in the name of Jesus Christ. That child will become a source of joy in the name of Jesus. Colossians chapter 3 verse 18 to 20. Colossians 3 18 to 20. The Bible then speaking, it says, Wives, submit yourself unto your own husband. That's what the Bible says. That's what the Bible says. A wife, you are there as a helpmate. You are there to support your husband. Submit yourself. Submit yourself to him. Submit yourself to him. You see, there are some things that don't need prayers. Not everything we pray about is a matter of searching the word of God to be inspired then applying it to that situation. Submit yourself. That's what the Bible says. Not compete with him. Submit yourself. Submit yourself. You are his companion. You are not his competitor. Submit yourself to him. That's what the Bible says. And in all things, submit yourself to him. That's what the Bible says. For those that are standing out of this word of God, rejecting the word of God, that's why they have, their lives are full of confusion, full of tension here and there. Living in a house as a stranger, living there as Tom and Jerry, fighting always. But I believe there's no one here like that this morning. Please, can you put that scriptures back on screen for us? Colossians 3. As 
it is fit in the Lord. As it is fit in the Lord, be submissive, submit yourself to Him. And I believe God cannot lie. God knows that that is the nature of man. That's how God designed man to be. When you submit yourself to a man, a man can do anything for you. When you submit yourself to him, he can do anything. He can go all the way for you. And if you flip the coin to the other side as well, the next one, the Bible says, Husbands, love your... Am I talking to the men in the house this morning? Please, can I hear uh, a feedback? Husband, love your... Shout hallelujah. Women are designed to be loved. As a husband, if you don't love your wife, someone else will love her for you. That's why as a man paying her bad price, you have taken that responsibility to love her. It is wisdom. It is wisdom. Love her. When you love a woman, she will give you her life. She'll give you her life. She can do anything because she knows that, yes, she's in a safe hands. But when you don't love her, you are always complaining. When she cooks for you, you finish eating and you complain about it and no, there is no salt, blah, blah, blah. I mean, she'll be upset. You can't get the best out of her. But when you compliment her, even after eating, you say, thank you. Oh, this food is yummy. You give her compliments, she will do more. It's wisdom. But I pray that for any home here that is under any form of tension, I decree peace right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Quickly, let's go for that because of time. What is divine wisdom? It is the product of a subject-focused meditation. It is the product of a subject-focused meditation. Proverbs 18.1 Proverbs 18.1 Through desire a man having separated himself Seeketh the intermediate with all, with all wisdom. When you separate yourself and you begin to meditate, you are rubbing your mind with the wisdom of God Almighty. You are pounding through. You are reflecting. The same way, naturally, if you want to drink an orange, do you just slice it and begin to drink it? You have to squeeze the orange isn't it, to get the juice out of it. The same way it is, any scriptures you read that relates to any subject matter, you need to pound on it, think over it, pound on it, reflect on it. How do these scriptures reflect to me? How does it, how, how, how does it apply to my life, to this situation? How can I apply it? You meditate on it. In the process of meditation, answers will come. In the midst of meditations, answers will come, solutions will come. That's why I pray for someone this morning. You will no longer be confused in life in the name of Jesus Christ. No more confusion for you in the name of Jesus Christ. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 15. First Timothy 4, 15. The Bible is speaking. It says, Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them that thy prophet may appear to all. As you read the word of God, meditate on it. Don't just meditate. Don't just study the word of God to quote scriptures. Study the word of God and meditate on it, pound on it to get solution, to get ideas, to get answers to every bugging issue. I pray that the grace to meditate on the word of God is coming afresh on someone this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. How do we access divine wisdom? How do we access divine wisdom? How do we get access to divine wisdom? Number one is true commitment to continuous feeding on the word of God. Say with me, true commitment to continuous feeding on the word. So it means that the more we study the word of God, the more wisdom we acquire. The more we sit with the word of God, the more we are rubbing our mind with the wisdom of God. Remember that the wisdom from above is above all. And the Bible says that anything that is from above is above all. And the word of God is the wisdom bank of God. The word of God is God's wisdom bank. The same way in the natural realm, you go into bank to withdraw money. 
the same way as you sit with the word of God, you are taking out wisdom from the word of God. You must not starve the capacity of wisdom you have. You must continue to feed on the word of God in order to continue to build on your wisdom. Because when you stop studying the word of God, you are starving the wisdom of God in your life. But I pray concerning you that the wisdom of God upon you will know no end in the name of Jesus Christ. Here is the bigger your wisdom, the bigger your improvement. The bigger your wisdom, the bigger your improvement. God's servant, the apostle over this commission, he invested a lot of time in seeking for wisdom. So I'm not surprised at the frequency, the way God is doing wonders through him. Imagine in 2019, when the whole world was shut down, God added 5,000 churches to this ministry. It can only be the wisdom of God. Year 2020 as well, the whole world was just, the whole world was just coming out of COVID-19. God added 10,000 churches to this ministry. To this ministry. With the natural wisdom, it's impossible. But with wisdom from above, it is possible. It is possible. Say it, it is possible. Uh -huh. So, wisdom, it enthrones. That's why I know that your own enthronement will know no end in the name of Jesus Christ. Your enthronement will know no end in the name of Jesus Christ. And if there are anyone that is ganging up to bring you down, I decree that God Almighty will disgrace them in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree, because the Bible is speaking, that surely they will gather. But not by me, said the Lord of hosts. Anyone that gather for your sake, that gather because of your advancement, because of your progress, they are angry. I decree that God will judge them in the name of Jesus Christ. God will scatter them in the name of Jesus Christ. Through commitment of continuous feeding on the word of God. Psalms 119 verse 97 to 100. Psalms 119 from verse 97 to 100. Oh, how love I thy Lord. It is my meditation all day, though through the com commandments, has made me wiser than my enemies. For they are ever with me. And verse 99 now, I have more understanding than all my teachers. For thy testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the ancient, because I keep thy precepts. So studying the word of God, you increase in wisdom. You increase in wisdom when you study in the word of God. Number two, access to divine wisdom is by the Holy Ghost. It's by the Holy Ghost. Through whom we have access to the deeper things of God. Through the Holy Ghost. Through the Holy Ghost. That's why you and I, we must continue to make the Holy Ghost as our best friend. You must make the Holy Ghost your best friend. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is the custodian of divine wisdom. The Bible is speaking in the book of John that he will teach you all things. John 16, verse 12 to 14. He will teach you all things. He will bring things to your remembrance. He will bring things to your remembrance. And the Holy Spirit searches deep things. He knows deeper things about God. There are things that eyes have never seen, that ears have never heard, but the Holy Spirit has access to them. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. 1 Corinthians 2, 9. The Bible there speaks, it says, eyes have never seen, neither ear heard, what God has reserved for those that love him. There are things that are secret. There are things that are not known to the world that God has reserved for his lovers. And the Holy Spirit knows those things, those secret things. Anytime you are rubbing your mind with the Holy Spirit concerning any subject matter, any issue of concern, the Holy Spirit will just be unveiling them to you, showing you what to do. And I pray for you one more time. Lift up your hands to God. I decree that you will never be stranded in life in the name of Jesus Christ. As a result of the Holy Ghost impartation that you have received this month, you will continue to scale new height on a daily basis all the days of your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Today is our Covenant Family Day. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. I would like us to know that the family you belong to will determine your heritage. 
the family you belong to will determine your heritage. We can see two characters in the Bible. Number one, talking about Gehazi. In the book of uh, Second Kings, chapter 5, Gehazi was a servant to Elisha. He has an inheritance of the double portion of the anointing upon Elisha's life. But because of greediness, he lost that opportunity. And not only that, if we go to that scriptures in 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 27, the Bible there says that he inherited leprosy for his family. He inherited leprosy for his family. And that was the portion all the days of their life. The second character was David. David loved God to the point that he said, Look, Lord, I will build a temple for you. God knew his heart. To the point that God said, Look, I found David, a man after my own heart. No one has ever thought to build a temple for me. But David, you had it in mind to build a temple for me. However, it's a good thing, but I will not allow you to build it because your hand is full of blood. Rather, your children, your child, I mean, Solomon, will build a temple for them. And not only that, through his lineage, Jesus Christ came. Why? Because he was a man that sought after God. He was a man that loved God. He attracted blessings, the blessings of God, into his family. Gehazi attracted causes, leprosy, into his own family. That's why you and I, it's a privilege for us that we are connected to the family of God Almighty. I thought someone is excited to hear this. We are connected to the family of God Almighty. The family of God is a blessed family. You are connected to winner's family. Winner's family, we are blessed family. We are prosperous family. Do I have a witness in the house this morning? We are blessed family. So that's why I know that because you are connected to this worthy, prosperous family, I decree that the blessings of God upon your life and your family will be on the overflow in the name of Jesus Christ. We serve a family loving God. We serve a family loving God. The first family created enjoyed blessings from the Lord God, and God has not changed. You can see that account in the book of Genesis from chapter 1, from verse 28 to 27 to 28. God has not changed. God is interested in our family. He's interested in it. I decree by the word of God today, any family that is cursed, that is under any form of spell, I decree that today marks the end of that spell in the name of Jesus Christ. I reposition your families under the blessings of God in the name of Jesus Christ. God wants us saved and our entire family. God wants us saved and our entire household. As we saw in the case of Colinius and the jailer in the book of Acts 10, 24. We saw it there how through Colinius, his household, his kinsmen, his near friends were saved because of him, for his sake. And also the jailers, if you remember the story of Paul and Silas, when they had the encounter, God visited them, suddenly the chains, everything was broken, the jailers, they were about to, to commit suicide. But Paul said to him, no, relax. They said, okay, what must we do? He said, you'll be safe. And if they accepted Christ, they and their household, the same way with you, because you are saved, your own family too as well is saved. That amen is too cold. One thing that salvation does, that salvation changes our status. Salvation, redemption, connects us to the blessings of God. Because you are redeemed, no any causes can have its way over your life anymore in the name of Jesus Christ. We should demand for the salvation of every member of our household if there's anyone that is here to be saved. We must go on our knees and ask, Lord, this is my uncle, my auntie that is here to be saved. Lord, reach out to them. Save them. We must seek for their salvation. Because you are saved in order for them to be saved. So if there are any that are here to be saved, you must reach out. 
in prayers and ask the Lord for their salvation. Hebrews 2, 3. Hebrews 2, 3. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by him that had him? And also John 3, 16, the gospel of the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have eternal life. I decree that for your sake, your own family will not perish in the name of Jesus Christ. So how do we secure the rescue of our family members? How do we secure it? We must recognize that every child of God has been redeemed from the cause of law and brought us under the blessings of Abraham. Galatians chapter 3, from verse 13 to 14. Christ has redeemed us from the cause of law, being made a cause for us, for it is written, Cause is everyone that hangeth on a tree. And verse 14, that the blessing of Abraham might come unto the Gentile through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. And verse 29 of that same chapter, verse 29 of that same chapter, it says that, And if ye be in Christ, then ye are Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. So for your sake, I decree that your whole family is saved and preserved and will enjoy the blessings of God in the name of Jesus Christ. To secure the rescue of our family members, number two, what must we do? Obedience is key. Obedience is key. Obedience, obedience, obedience is a gateway to a world of all-round blessings. Obedience is a gateway to a world of all-round blessings. The book of Deuteronomy, your enemy, is in Romans chapter 28, reading from verse 1 to 13. The book of Deuteronomy 28, 1 to 13. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I commanded this day, that the Lord thy God shall set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. And verse 2, it will that it says, And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. And verse 3, now please. Blessed shall thou be in the city. I thought someone would say amen to that. Yeah. Blessed shall you be in the city. Yeah. And blessed shall thou be in the field. Yeah. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body. Yeah. And the fruit of thy ground. Yeah. And the fruit of thy cattle. Yeah. The increase of thy cane. Yeah. And the flock of thy sheep. Yeah. That is in the works of your hand. You continue to enjoy blessings. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shall thou be when thou comest in. And blessed shall thou be when thou, thou goest out. The next verse. The Lord shall cause thy enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee in one way and flee before thee seven ways. I thought someone was saying a bigger even to that. The Lord shall command the blessings upon thee in thy storehouse and in all that thou setest thy hands to do. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God shall give thee. The Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself as he had sworn unto thee. If thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. And all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord thy God. And they shall what? They shall be afraid of thee. I thought someone would say amen to it. Are you tired of these prayers? 11, he said, And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle and in the fruit of thy ground, Amen. in the land which the Lord swore unto thy fathers to give thee. Amen. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, Amen. the heaven to give thee rain unto thy land in a season, Amen. and to bless all the works of thy hand. Amen. And thou shalt lend to many nations, Amen. and thou shalt not borrow. Amen. And verse 13 now, and the Lord shall make thee to be the head, and not the tail, and thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. If thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, 
which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. I pray that all these places shall be your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. But the key is obedient. When you obey God, you obey his commandment, you become a commander in life as a result of his blessings that are following you, as a result of the blessings that are pursuing you. I decree this morning that the blessing of God will run after you, overtake you, and surround you all the days of your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Number three, we enter into a covenant to serve God. See, we don't serve God in vain. When you enter into a covenant to serve God, you enjoy His blessings. Hear me and hear me, well, people of God. There are there's general blessings for everyone, but there are some special blessings that are with those that serve God. There are general blessings. Even unbelievers, they are enjoying from that general blessings. But there are some certain special blessings that God has reserved for those that serve Him. Enter into a covenant to serve Him. Second Chronicles chapter 15, from verse 12 to 15. The Bible talking about the Israelites there. That before this verse, verse 12, there was trouble everywhere. But when they entered into a covenant to serve God, and the latter part of that, as scripture I quoted, verse 15, the Bible says, God gave them rest round about. Rest round about. As you keep serving God Almighty, you continue to enjoy rest round about in the name of Jesus Christ. As I begin to round up, we must open up to receive and believe every blessing proclaimed on our lives and families in this service. And they shall be established in the name of Jesus Christ. Numbers chapter 6, from verse 23 to 27. Numbers 6, 23 to 27. Speak unto Aaron and unto his sons, saying, On this day, on this wise, ye shall bless the children of Israel, of winners. I just want to say amen to it. Amen. Saying unto them, May the Lord bless thee. Amen. Stretch out your hands to this altar. May the Lord bless you and your family in the name of Jesus. Amen. May the Lord keep you in the name of Jesus. Amen. The next verse, please. May the Lord cause his face to shine on you in the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord be gracious to you in the name of Jesus Christ. The next verse. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you all round peace in the name of Jesus Christ. From this time onwards, no more trouble in the name of Jesus Christ. From this time onwards, no more untimely deaths in the name of Jesus Christ. In your family, anyone that is jobless, I decree that there shall be supernatural connection to this miracle job in the name of Jesus Christ. Concerning you, I decree no barrenness will be traceable with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone that is barren in your household, by the reason of today's blessing, I decree fruitfulness with such person in the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone that is experiencing misfortune, I decree by the word of God this morning that that misfortune shall be converted to fortune in the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone that is sick, maybe sickness is ravaging, going all around from one member of family to another, I decree that today marks the end of sickness in your life and family in the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone that is under any form of tension, any marital tension or relationship, you have tension there, I decree that that tension stop now in the name of Jesus Christ. For any troubled child, I decree that the hand of God will rest upon that child in the name of Jesus Christ. Every form of causes, maybe one member of the family has brought it into you, into your family. I close doors against every trace of causes in the name of Jesus Christ. Those causes are converted to blessings in the name of Jesus Christ. Any evil that is tampering with your family, that is going on as a generational issue, I decree by the word of God, I stand on this exalted altar, I decree that the blood of God, the blood of Jesus, will travel to the root of every issue in your family and make it right in the name of Jesus Christ. For you it shall be from glory to glory, from testimony to testimonies. Your blessing shall be a prosperous family in the name of Jesus Christ. The blessings of God will continue to be from one level to a higher level. For you and your family in the name of Jesus Christ. Divine protection for you in the name of Jesus. 
so shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Let's be on our feet. Let's appreciate God and thank Him. Let's give Him praise. If you have received anything at all this morning, go ahead and appreciate God and thank Him. Go ahead and give Him praise. Abraham 